Oregon Cable and the Bradenton Herald are proud to present the high school football game of the week. Tonight's playoff game between the Southeast Seminoles and the Auburndale Bloodhounds is sponsored by Alex Karras Lincoln Mercury, where you get that special deal. Coast Federal, we treat you better. Conley Buick, the great Florida road belongs to Buick. Bill Graham Ford, where service means a great deal. Noreen's Deli for the finest in deli meats and sandwiches. And Grinders, skateboards and accessories, Bradenton's newest skateboard park and emporium. We'll be back with our pregame show. Florida for our high school game. team of the week. We've got Southeast in the Section 3 Class 4A Championship game against those Bloodhounds from South and Southeast Seminoles making the trip up here. I'm Jim Brockman. I'll be bringing you the play-by-play -play tonight on Paragon. Tad Reeve alongside, as usual, providing the color commentary. And Tad, quite frankly, a lot of people have picked uh, Southeast as a heavy favorite, even here on the road. Uh, this far, only eight teams left uh, fighting for that Class 4A championship. Uh, Dunkel Index, 16-point favorite to Southeast. Do you think it's that lopsided, or did the Bloodhounds have a little surprise up here. Well, I think, you know, any time a team gets this far to the final eight, they've got to be a pretty good football team. But, yes, no question, Southeast is a heavy favorite. Auburndale has the advantage of playing at home. But this is a team that was 3-7 and seven last year in Class 5A District 7 with Manatee. Uh, this season lost to Winter Haven 40-21. We saw Manatee destroy Winter Haven. Not a real good football team. They've lost to a team that had a losing record of Cala Forest. So it's a beatable team, no question. Do you think that that makes that much difference going from Class 5A to 4A to reflect that much of a difference in the record? Or uh, are they that much better this year? I think it's the exact same team. The difference is in 5A7, that you're playing some terrific competition. Teams that still beat them. Another loss this year was Lake Gibson. They lost badly. Lost badly to Winter Haven. I think had they remained in 5A7, they still would have had that kind of record. Okay, don't go away. Playoff action for you right here on Paragon Cable. We'll be right back. The Godfather at 616 30th Avenue East is your. Uh, I'm Jim Brockman along with Tad Reed for Paragon Cable and uh, Tad, our, our first serious road effort of the year and this usually happens playoff time. We thought we'd come on up and see how the Southeast Seminoles do against Auburn here in the Section 3 Championship Class 4A and you uh, see the Bloodhounds from Auburndale running onto the field. A lot of the folks in the crowd down there forming a tunnel and a good sized crowd and a real nice stadium up here in the nice little town of Auburndale. Uh, we drove around a little bit trying to find the stadium. We found it. Got to see a little bit of Auburndale. Got to see a little bit of Auburndale. But it should be an excellent matchup. Uh, lots of folks, uh, as we mentioned in our pregame show, uh, underrate uh, this team right here, underestimate Auburndale. We'll see if they can prove their critics wrong. They're 16-point underdogs coming in. Uh, but, Dad, you made a good point. If a team gets this far, you know, how bad could they be? They've yeah. got to be a good football yeah. And in defense of Auburndale, they, they have had some good victories uh, recently. Uh, they struggled in 5A7, but who wouldn't in that district? A lot of good teams uh, you see come out with 6-4, 5-5 five five records in that district. They're still very good football teams, right. just the schedule they play. Well, in 1987, when Manatee reached the Class 5A semifinals, let's not forget, Auburndale beat Manatee 3 to nothing right here at this field. Well, and something else, you talk about some kind of a drop-off going from 5A to 4A, at least as far as Manatee County is concerned. Uh, Auburndale doesn't get much of a break. They don't have to deal with Manatee anymore to try to win a district yeah, they, well, they get somebody just to get to the state. Yeah, but now they got the Southeast Seminoles. And I don't think it holds true necessarily that 5A everywhere is superior to 4A. I don't right. believe that. But 5A7 is definitely superior to, for instance, 4A11, which Southeast is right. in. Southeast is a terrific football team, but the other teams in the district aren't. Right. And the same holds true for the uh, district Auburndale is in. They were expected to have a 4-6, uh, and 5-5 five and five kind of season. Uh, surprisingly swept through the district undefeated, beat, uh, beat Lakeland Kathleen, a team that Last year, we saw Southeast beat in this very game back in Bradenton. 
Okay, we're about set to go, kicking it off. Rodney Chevalier, no relation to Maurice that we know of on the kickoff. Back deep for the Seminoles. We'll line them up for you as we go. We're on top of the stadium here in Auburndale. Taking it, Drenone Mays. Excuse me, that's Clarence Williams up to his 29-yard line, where he's down by number 30. Victor Johnson, Southeast, will start first and 10 at their own 28, and we're underway for the section championship. Offensively, both teams are a lot alike. Neither team likes to throw the ball. Auburndale threw the ball 55 times. Southeast, even less than that. Southeast threw about 40 passes for the season. Don't want to throw the ball. You're going to see a lot of Reggie Beatty up the middle and, of course, Anthony Shelman outside. Those two went for 1,000 yards each this year. And let's see, of course, the quarterback number one, Mr. Excitement, Freddie Douglas, the quarterback for Southeast. Behind him, Anthony Shellman, who had some fluid drained from his knee earlier in the week, but he looked real strong uh, working out before the game in pregame workouts. Looks like he has all of his speed. We got yeah, a whistle. You, and but you saw what they were having a problem with communication. Uh, Kelvin Reeves, uh, wide playing flanker, number 14, and Freddie Douglas uh, had some confusion. Could get the playoff. That's uh, costly to start. Five-yard penalty. It'll be first and 15 now for Southeast. And keep in mind, both Anthony Shellman and Reggie Beatty, the starting uh, running backs for Southeast, had 1,000-plus yard years during the regular season. That doesn't happen often on any level of football. Beatty's up to uh, uh, over 1,200 through 11 games. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Shellman over 1,200. Beatty almost 1,100 through 11 games. They both hit the 1,000-yard mark through the 10-game uh, regular season. Yeah, that's impressive. And let's take a look at those lineups. Freddie Douglas, number one, your quarterback. Anthony Shellman, Reggie Beatty behind him. Wide receivers, Kelvin Reeves, Keiston Beatty, and Doug Coleman, number 83, to tie it in for Southeast. We'll give you the rest of that lineup in just a moment. First and 15 for the Seminoles. Straight ahead, Anthony Shellman. Good running room. Breaks the tackle up over the 30. Tripped up there initially by Eric Robinson, number three. I think you can, see, you can see Southeast is a larger team. Uh, Auburndale doesn't have a lot of size. Scrappy defensively, but they've given up a lot of points in games. Remember uh, our center, Colin Malou, Jeremiah Joyner, Reggie Greeny. He's a big one. Jason Hughes and Steven Spisak, that fine offensive line for Southeast. Shellman got eight on that last play. It'll bring up second down seven. Douglas with the pitch back to Shellman again. He crosses the 35. He'll be short of a first down. He gets it up to the 36. Third down and about three, making the stop down there, number 45. Larry Dixon. They're talking about this defense, and I hate to harp on it, but in this last game of the regular season, game number 10, this team lost to Winter Haven 40 to 21. It was they had an emotional letdown having beaten Lakeland Kathleen the week before to clinch the district. But still, I think no excuse to get beat by a team like Winter Haven that kind of score. Shellman straight ahead. We got a flag down, and I don't know if he's got the first down. We'll see what the flag is. And Tad, you know that, that it's tempting to do. You got to be careful. You talk about Southeast almost beat Manatee. Manatee he beats up on Winter Haven. You get into that kind of a game, but but seriously, the team we when we saw Winter Haven play Manatee in that last. Uh, uh, game we had, regular season game from Hawkins Stadium. The penalty will go against Southeast. Winter Haven was not a very good football team. You know, they had some individual talent, uh, but not enough to, uh, I certainly wouldn't compare them to Southeast. No, no uh, way. In the worst situation. Holding is the call against Southeast, and that's costly on about third and three. Yeah, We're going to make that about third and 19 now. And when, Well, about third and 13, third and 14, and Southeast hates this kind of situation. Uh, Douglas doesn't throw the ball real effectively. He's got a couple of receivers he can go to, but uh, puts him in a tough position Douglas right here. Douglas rolls right. He's got a man open. He finds ba Beatty wide open. He's got a first down across the 45. And that's what you call on third and 14. Reggie oh. Beatty gets it. A uh, gain of nearly 25 Beatty's yards. He's up to the 49. Still down. He took a pop. He was drilled out there getting the hit. I believe it was number 33, Dexter Johnson. Well, and wait, Beatty. He, was, he was cutting back, so when he got hit, he was at a complete standstill. But a, a beautiful play on third and 14, up to the 49-yard line, gain of about 21, where Southeast gets a first down. But as you can see right there, uh, Beatty got his bell rung. They're that working was, on the five. That was well. a great little route, though. Uh, nice little move out from the uh, backfield, slid him right under the coverage, and then Beatty just used his speed to yeah. pick up the first down. The real key, uh, someone had a shot at him back inside his own 35. Uh, one great move on his own enabled him to get the first down. And he, he turned he turned on the Jets, got downfield quick. So Freddie Douglas completes his first pass of the night. It's a good one on third and 14. Southeast maintains possession, first and 10 at their own 49-yard line. And you can look at your screens at home. You you can see the size difference, how much bigger Southeast is than the Auburndale Bloodhound straight ahead. 
That's Turi Thomas, who's in for the ailing Beatty. He gets about three to the 48-yard line. First venture into Bloodhound territory for the Seminole. Beatty coming back in. He's, a, he's limping a little bit as he runs back Notice on the field. We saw in the last game of the season when they, uh, when they beat Bayshore so badly, Beatty had a lot of problems with cramps, Charlie horses. Uh, but he got his 1,000 yards. Kept him in there. He, a gutty effort to get his 1,000, but uh, boy, his legs were killing him. Second down, seven, 9.26 to go in a scoreless first quarter. There's Beatty. He looks fine on that play for another first down. He might go. They've got an angle on him. He's pushed out of bounds. Oh, that's got to be that's got to be a flag. Inside the 30-yard line, no flag thrown, making the tackle down there. Number 83, Virgil McCombs. It'll be another first down in the second big play of the first quarter for Reggie Beatty. Uh, and Bradenton, that's uh, you tack on 15. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Seminoles on the move. See big Colin Malou out there leading the way. Beatty and Shelman are the setbacks, and we've got a flag. Either somebody moved or someone was in that uh, no-no zone there for an encroachment penalty. Offsides, it will go against the Bloodhounds. That gives Southeast a break. It'll bring up first down and five. And the Southeast Seminoles, of course, no stranger to playoff action making it all the way to the state finals last season before being beaten and beaten soundly by Niceville up in the panhandle. Well, I don't know about you, but I got a feeling we're here again. We're up on top we're of the press box. It's cold with a nice wind. But here. nothing like nothing like that Niceville trip. It's yeah. chilly. This is chilly. That was brutally ridiculously uh -oh. cold. We got man in motion. That was Anthony Shellman breaking too quickly. They so might the, just give them that five yards right back. Yeah, that five that they got as a gift, they're going to give it right back. And we're, we're back at first and ten for Southeast at the 27-yard line of Auburndale. And a nice crowd on hand. A, a nice look stadium here in Auburndale, Florida. Real nice home. The home side of the field uh, looks like a nice small college uh, facility. Really does. The visiting side, not real deep, but it's uh, filled up with Southeast fans tonight. Just over nine minutes to go first quarter. Pitch goes back to Shelman. He's got a block. He stumbles a little bit as he gets inside the 25 to the 23, making the hit down there. Number three, once again, Eric Robinson, second down six. The winner of this game uh, will play either Pompano Beach, Ely, or Fort Lauderdale Dillard, a couple of teams Southeast is very familiar with right. in uh, next Friday's semifinal game. And, of course, Southeast defeated Pompano Beach, Ely, and that's where we're on that roof there, you see, up on top with our cameraman, Dr. Alan Linkoff, and the rest of the crew. Second down. We'll call it six. Douglas gets away from one tackle behind the line of scrimmage, gets a block from Shellman, turns it upfield, turns it into a nice play and a flag late. That makes you think maybe it's a face mask or something of that nature. But Douglas close to first down territory before taking a hit and being stopped by Larry Dixon. Yeah, he looked destined for a loss, got a real nice block from Anthony Shellman, and then turned it upfield. Officials discuss it, and they will tack on more yardage. More good news for the Seminoles, and that will definitely be a first down. Inside the tent, it'll be first and goal for Southeast at the eight-yard line. Southeast, and anyone who's uh, watched Southeast here on Paragon Cable or a fan out there in Manatee County knows how tough Southeast is when they get on top. When they get that 7 or 14 nothing lead, this you may as well go home. Yeah, they just start steamrolling after that. We've seen a couple of cases they, they tend to fall asleep, but they maintain the lead. Auburndale has to avoid letting Southeast uh, get six on this drive. They could probably withstand three. But... Fake to Shellman. Good looking fake by Douglas. He pumps, and now he'll fight to get back to the line of scrimmage and get a yard or two. Yeah, He's hit out of be, bounds. Had to be a busted play. Absolutely no receivers downfield when he turned. Uh, Bruce somewhere Washington. there was confusion about exactly what was going on. Bruce Washington on the tackle. He also will play a lot of offense tonight. Douglas did a good job to get what he did. Got it down to the five yard line. Second down and goal from the five yard line. Look at that big offensive uh, line for Southeast. They've been doing the job all year long. And uh, blocking for the likes of Douglas, Shellman, and Beatty. And you can understand why Southeast has that murderous rushing game. Straight ahead. That's Shellman. He is stopped just shy of the goal line. He's inside the one, making the tackle down there. Number 23, Tony Pagan. Tony Pagan, only 5'7", 145, bringing down big Anthony Shellman. And we might see a lot of that tonight. Third and goal inside the one. 
gentlemen, Manatee County's leading scorer this season. Uh, scored a bunch of points, like 120 points, and then we'll add some more in last week. 38 to 18 victory over uh, Naples Bear and Collier. That's, of course, who Southeast beat in the first round of the playoffs to claim the regional championship. Third down, Shellman. I don't believe he got in. A great defensive surge. And let's give the credit down there. Firing in low was Virgil McCombs, number 83. He's six feet tall, 160 pounds. He's also a freshman. And makes it fourth down from the one-yard line. An got, early, got to go for it here. An early turning point in the game. you got to assume Southeast will go for it. Fourth and one. Auburndale with a goal line stand here could really change some momentum. Southeast lines it up, fourth down. It's getting noisy now. Seven minutes to go in our first quarter. Power eye backfield. It's Reggie Beatty. He walks in. No problem. Southeast scores six on fourth down. Six nothing. Southeast will wait for Kenny Motes to put on the uh, point after on the board. And right away, Ted, Southeast establishes themselves. Had to throw one pass in a tough situation, third and long, but they threw it. They completed it. And then the running game takes over. And, you're and, up they, and they've got right back to what they do best. Took an, they've got that early lead. And like we say, they are an awful tough when uh, they get ahead. The only time we saw them uh, get ahead and blow it against Manatee early in the right, season they got ahead of when they simply showed an, uh, an inability to throw the ball. Had they been able to throw it that night, I'm not Might so have sure beaten Manatee the would have gotten out of there. Kenny Moats kicks it right through the middle. It's 7-0 Southeast. We'll be back with more right after this. Seven nothing lead. We're at the midway point of our first quarter on a kickoff there. Randy Washington returned it out near the 25 yard line where Derek Boyd made the tackle. We're set, ready to go. Quarterback for Auburndale, uh, Ryan Reeves, number 17, only one interception through his first 11 games this year. There's a handoff. That's Randy Washington, and he'll cross out to about the 30, some decent yardage for about four. It'll bring up second down and six, hitting him first down there for the Seminoles. They've got an uh, Drenone Mays on the stuff. Auburndale's got an interesting brother or combination in the backfield. Randy Washington, the tailback, is uh, a senior. Uh, the fullback is a sophomore, Bruce Washington, number 35, his younger brother. So the two brothers running in uh, some size in that offensive line for Auburndale. And, they, and look at their, look at their, they look a lot alike. They're both short and stocky, powerful runners. Randy Washington again, looks like the same play. He's got a first down. He crosses the 40 up near the 45 yard line where he's tripped up by Drenone Mays, number eight. Gets big yardage and a first down and the Southeast defense, usually invincible, uh, gives up a first down easily here on this first series for the Bloodhounds. Randy Washington on 170 carries this season, rushed for 1,193 yards and scored 13 touchdowns. So he's had himself quite a, quite a year. And of course his brother also back there, Bruce Washington, number 35. First and 10 for the Bloodhounds, just inside their own 45-yard line. Hand off straight. There's the, there's the brother actors, Bruce Washington, for about four, up near the 49-yard line, where he's dropped by James Pogue, the fine linebacker for Southeast. Second down and six, and what little we've seen, Ted, Auburndale can run the football. I tell you what they do well is by the time they hit that hole, they, these two backs are in full speed. They really are, are powerful runners, get their knees up, and when they hit the hole, they're really coming at you hard. 5-10 to go in the first quarter. Southeast might be a little bit shocked. Hard to run on the Seminole football team. Hand off to Randy Washington, and this time they get penetration in the backfield, and Southeast breaks up the play, a loss of a yard. Getting back there is Theron Mabry, number nine from his secondary spot, and no gain on the play. He did a good job just to get back to the line of scrimmage, second, third down and six. Be interesting to see if they're going to throw the ball this time. They certainly don't like to throw the ball unless absolutely necessary. Reeves was 31 of 55 this season for 567 yards, but in the last six games passed for 443 of those yards. So he obviously feels more comfortable throwing now than he did earlier in the year. So a big third down play. Third down and six. And a draw play. Nice call. Washington. Run beautifully inside the 40. Drew it up on the board. Making the stop down there. Number 31, Keith Williams. Almost stopped in the backfield. Somebody missed a tackle back there. Costly for Southeast. Big game for the Bloodhounds. But that was a terrific call. That was Southeast nice. was thinking pass. 
Little draw play, picked up the nice yardage. So a first down, Auburndale starting to roll. They're at the 32-yard line of Southeast where they've got a first and 10. They trail 7-0, but they're trying to do something about that. Right now, Ryan Reeves, your quarterback, he still hasn't thrown a pass. And we've got all kinds of movement. Let's see who that one's on. We had five or six guys down there jumping around. Offside Southeast. Keith Williams didn't agree with the call. He threw up his hands in disgust, but it'll be first and five for the Bloodhounds. Tough goal for a defensive player there because if they see somebody move, then what they do right. need to do is jump across the line. If they see it and the referee doesn't, then they're penalized. So it's a tough call for a defensive, defensive player to make. So Auburndale, a nice, steady, methodical drive, keeping the ball on the ground, keeping the Southeast defense off balance. And we've seen enough of what Randy Washington can do. There's his brother, Bruce Washington, for a little bit of yardage, near the 25, brought down in a hurry. Quentin Stanley makes the initial hit. Second down, three, 314 to go in our first quarter. Quickly played first quarter as both offenses able to move the football, chew up the clock using their ground games. Dale in good position, second and three at the 25-yard line. The Southeast defense uh, a little confused. Almost had some movement there again. Long count. Same play back to Randy Washington, but the Knowles react and shut it down. Ted Randall got back there first, number 52, along with Drenone Mays. Loss on the play. That'll bring up third down and five. Well, good job along the perimeter of the line. That southeast right side defensive line slowed him up just enough. Randall came all the way from the backside, caught him from behind to bring him down. And let's take a look at that southeast. Uh, uh, there's a secondary back there. Clarence Williams, Drenone Mays, Theron Mabry, Derek Boyd, Keith Williams, James Carey. That's a good unit, along with James Pogue, Ted Randall, Reggie Spearman, Kevin Palmer. Quentin Stanley, you've got to look a ways before you find a better high school defense than those Southeast Seminoles. Third down. Reeves gets the pass off, and uh, nobody there intended, almost intended, for Rodney Chevalier. Uh, if he had thrown it better, it would have been intercepted. He threw it into the ground. It'll bring up fourth down. You know, statistically, this, this defense give, has given up a lot more points than Southeast defenses of the past, but they've always gotten the job done. They've always shut down the team when they have to. When they give up points, it seems to be late in the game. The old Southeast teams used to be able to uh, string together four or five shutouts in the season. Big play here. Going for it on fourth down. Our, the Bloodhounds, not that big of a gamble. They're deep in Southeast territory, but it is fourth down and a long five. Ryan Reeves will go back to the air off play action. He's got a little time. He's got a man down there, but oh, it might be a touchdown. It is a beautiful catch by number 23, Tony Pagan. Beautiful, beautiful catch. Hey, if, if I see somebody in the NFL make that catch, you, you're, a, you're stunned. That was a tremendous, tremendous just, catch. Just got the foot down, or it had been out of bounds. Perfect timing, good coverage by the Southeast secondary. You can't. Uh, yell there's about that coverage. There's absolutely nothing you can do. The ball was thrown about a yard Remarkable. and a half past the end zone, stretched his hands out, kept his feet in bounds. Incredible play. Brian Pruitt on to attempt the extra point. And Ted, we got to quit listening to people who think they know what's going to happen in this game that Auburndale doesn't have it. Kick is up. It's good, and we're all tied at seven. Don't go away. We got us a good one. at home are used to and the fine job that the people at Paragon do. Bill Cavus, our producer, director, and his crew got here tonight. We we're blowing fuses in the stadium. We we're having a little trouble with some of the problems because they just don't have enough electricity here as Reggie Beatty gets out over the 35. Fumble. Fumble the football. It's recovered by Auburndale and look out. The Bloodhounds with a big break. They just stripped Reggie Beatty making a recovery down there. Number three, Eric Robinson, who's looked good on defense. As I was about to say, folks at home are used to seeing a beautiful catch like that last touchdown reception again on our replay. Due to lack of power here, we won't have replays for the folks at home that we apologize, but the facilities aren't quite enough what we need here for our truck here in Auburndale, Florida. The good so, news is we won't make Southeast fans see that fumble again either. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so there is a bright side to that. Well, I'll but, tell you, uh, Reese has shown when he threw that last pass, obviously uh, can throw the football. That's a double threat. Here they've uh, got it deep again in Southeast Territory. And our crew, there we go, straight ahead. Oh, reverse, gonna, and here comes Reese again. And this one looks a little underthrown. It's intercepted there in Mabry, and he's going to be stopped down at the one. That's almost as good as a coffin corner kick. But Mabry does make the interception, so Southeast gets the turnover right back, but now they'll start at their own one Reese yard line. Reese threw it up in the air. This one just kind of had too, had too much arc, not enough uh, oomph on the ball. Lobbed it up there, made the nice interception. Got good position. Actually, we wouldn't have gotten on the air at all tonight, but it, except for Doug Hale, who brought along his mystery hammer, which makes everything work, as long as he just pounds on some things down there, and we got it work. Of course, the goalpost fell down when it happened. <laughs> we got it back up tonight. Oh, that's their trouble up here. Yeah. We're on the air. And a nice job by our crew to get us on the air. But Southeast backed up inside their own one-yard line with 99-plus yards to go. We're all tied at seven, and Auburndale has looked very sharp here in the early going. Less than a minute to go first quarter. And here comes Freddie Douglas, fooling everybody, gets a first down and a, and a face mask. They almost took Douglas's head off. He gets out over the 15 for a first down, and there'll be some more yardage tacked on, well, so a and, nice and play to get out of that hole. with a penalty, they go from the 1 to the 31, from uh, having to be very conservative to out where you're very comfortable. Well, I'll tell you, Ted, that was one of those, I'm not blaming anyone for a flagrant face mask, but Freddie Douglas, you could really get hurt on a play like that. That's probably obvious to you at home. He got grabbed, and his, his body was about three yards down the field. His head was still back upfield. That's twice it's happened to Douglas. I think the reason really, why, hurt. Douglas is a very shifty runner. He's tough to get hold of. People are grabbing hold of what they can. Uh, a couple of face masks along the way. So first and 10 at the 31 for Southeast, a huge 30-yard gain total when you tack on the penalty. There comes, uh, I believe that's Ricky Beatty. That was and he's a, out over the 35. You know, in two plays, uh, we went from uh, from Auburndale having the ball to Southeast 30, then you had the interception, yeah. and then that play with the big penalty. Now Southeast got the ball in the same place. Big turn of events. Larry Dixon rode Beatty for a while, finally brought him down, and Beatty's still noticeably limping. He took a shot in the thigh, but he gets about six in that play. Second and four, and that's the end of our first quarter. We're all tied 7-7 here in Auburndale, Florida. Those of you at home, we're just starting our second quarter. We're all tied at seven. And if you just tuned in, you tuned into a good one. We're all tied at seven. Both teams showing they can move the ball offensively. Douglas keeps it. He's got big yardage, but he trips. Just getting a, a finger on him there to help bring him down was Larry Dixon, but uh, Douglas did the rest by slipping. He's out uh, at the 41. That's where his knee hit down. And that's close to a first down. Well, if he doesn't fall, he gets a lot of yards. He had lots of open uh, open space there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Beautiful evening, really. Not that cold. I mean, it, compared to Niceville, this is a you know a stroll <laughs> in the park, I'm isn't it? I'm sweating up here on the beach. And it's first down for Southeast. And the one thing Auburndale has to prove is that they can stop this Southeast offense as well. Southeast has to prove the same thing. They got the interception last time. You know, the good news for Southeast, speaking of Niceville, they don't have to go through Niceville to get a state championship this Their year. history. Niceville uh, moved up to 5A this year, did not make the playoffs, so they had a tremendous season. The Dunkel Index rated them the best team in Florida this season, and they didn't even make the playoffs. Uh -oh, Douglas Fumble. Fumble trying to pitch it. It's recovered by Auburndale. Heads up recovery. Making re uh, That's Eric Robinson, his second fumble recovery. And he keeps this up. He's going to get himself a defensive game ball. Well, Auburndale, is, good field position. And that is two fumbles right around the 30-yard line of Southeast. You cannot make those kinds of mistakes and uh, hang in there in a playoff game. Eric Robinson, all of 5'9 and 155 pounds, worth his weight in gold tonight thus far for the Bloodhounds. They've got great field position at the 29-yard line of Southeast, and a, a bad sign for the Seminoles. Two fumbles early, and usually when Southeast gets beat, it's because they beat themselves. Right. Games are more often lost than won in high school football. Keeping it is Reeves, and he'll get about three or four before he's gang-tackled down there by hitting him first, James Pogue. Yeah, It'll across, be up second down across six. Across town in Bradenton, I think the reason Manatee all of a sudden started winning and, and became a better team simply because they quit making so many mistakes. We saw them early in the year. They fumbled the ball so often. 
they quit doing that, then uh, now they're beating some pretty good football teams. And there's Joe Parrish, the head football coach for Auburndale. In his uh, 16th year here at Auburndale. A little equipment problem down there. They're sorting that out. And Auburndale in great uh, uh, position. Uh, we're not sure how good their kicker is, Brian Pruitt. He struggled to make that extra point. Yeah, floated a three. If a, uh, if a field goal should come into play here. And there we got people jumping all around. That looks like Auburndale jumped off sides, but we'll see. Well, Ted Randall sure thinks it was Auburndale. He came firing through the line. No, they call it against, against him. You can see by the reaction by number 90, Kevin Palmer, the fine defensive line for Southeast. That's as high as he's ever gotten off the ground. He didn't well, like that, the you call. Know, it's a tough I, I tough, didn't like it either. Put you in a tough position. You see somebody move, you say, man, the referee's got to see that too. Because yeah. then you commit yourself. Second down and one for Auburndale. 17 to go in our first half. Straight ahead handoff to one of the Washington boys. That's Bruce Washington down to the 16 for a first down. Getting up uh, Stanley on the stop. Did I say it wasn't too bad? It is a little windy. We're getting hit by a real breeze up here now. <laughs> but we've got Monique up here making sure that uh, we get the job done. Monique, of course, our, uh, what do you call it, floor manager. Our floor a manager. native of nearby Lake Gibson. I got to learn the term. Yeah, native of Lake Gibson, who beat Manatee, the only team to beat the Manatee Hurricanes. And she was year. pleased with that. She was. As there were a lot of the Southeast fans watching tonight's <laughs> game. And that's what Randy Washington. And we've got a flag, and I think we're going to see a face mask. Lots of penalties, lots of mistakes so far. Hurting the Southeast Seminoles. Well, that'll put the ball down around the Southeast Six. And uh, they're going to mark it. Looks like it's against uh, oh, wait a second. Auburndale. Okay. I spoke too a, soon. A clip or a hole we didn't see. Got about three, but it's going to come back. Boy, and it's big, a major one. Yeah, big penalty. Maybe we got a clip down there. It's on the far side of the field. It is a clip. And that's really going to hurt Auburndale's chances for scoring down here. Back out to the 28-yard line. It'll still be first down, but first down in a bunch. Long count by Reeves. The pitch goes back to Bruce oh, Washington. Kevin Great. Palmer. Kevin Palmer with a, an all-star play. Hits him for a loss. Kevin Palmer played defensive end last year. They Because they didn't have any linebackers this season, Paul Meckley said, we're going to try it linebacker. All of a sudden, he just went incognito for, for the first right. half of the season. It was like he wasn't on the field anymore. They switched him back to defensive end, and he came alive. He He's is a much, much better player there at defensive end in a down position. That's home for him. Now that he's back there, he's a he's the kind of guy who makes a lot happen. Second down now in 26 for Auburndale. They've got to get all the way down to just outside the southeast five-yard line for a first down. 8.48 to go second quarter. We're all tied at seven. Section three championship, class 4A. Here comes the reverse again. And he's going to throw it. Pass. And we got a man open down. That's Robinson who recovered the fumbles. Not quite a first down. Making the pass down there is Rodney Chevalier. And Eric Robinson, who's already recovered two fumbles tonight on the receiving end. Auburndale now looking at third and about one. And, and he did a great job coming back to the ball. That's the kind of thing you got to say, never mind where it comes down. It's got to come down in my hands. If I fall down, fine. Well, Auburndale may be a lot of things, but they're not bashful. <laughs> they've, they've tried some crazy plays. It's state playoff time, and they're, everything they got in the playbook we're seeing tonight. Boy, at that time, they really fooled the Manatee, I mean, the uh, Southeast defense. Third and one. An excellent scoring position again. A 25-yard pass play on second and 25, the old halfback pass. And we got moving. Now, that's got to be against Auburndale. Yeah, Washington jump. And that's going to make it third and six, and that's very costly. That was Bruce Wash or excuse me, Randy, Randy. Washington jumping. It'll be a five-yard penalty, and that third and six down inside their close is a long way to go. Big break for Southeast. Get up. Come on, they human just like you are. Come on. And a lot of folks made the trip up from Bradenton tonight. We're over on the, our press box is on the home side of the field across the way. Southeast pretty much filled up those visitor stands. Boy, and Auburndale's got a packed house. Reeves back to throw. He's got a man open. Oh, oh great terrific. defense. Oh, they called the flag. I don't know. 
I don't know. Oh. Looked pretty nice. Clarence Williams, I believe, number six on the defense. And he reached over. Of course, we couldn't quite see that left hand, but uh, it's going to be pass interference. Boy, it sure looked from it looked up nice. here that it he looked just like a big league play. And that thing away. It looked like a big league play. The pass was intended for Robinson. Interference is a call. Automatic first down. Down to the six-yard line. So, once again, the penalties hurt Southeast. A tough call to make. Official in much better position than either you or I. Sure changes the complexion of this drive. First and first, first and goal, goal to six. six. Seven fifty-four to go. Second quarter. Auburn trying to take the lead. We're tied at seven. Ryan Reeves is a kind of quarterback. He looks real comfortable out there, real poised. Doesn't look on that touchdown pass. Uh, Doesn't look worried at all in the didn't pocket. Didn't break a sweat. And trying to run wide is Randy Washington. He's got some room. Five. Touchdown, Auburndale. 13-7. Keith Williams got over there, but too late. And you see some of the packed house here for Auburndale cheering on the Bloodhounds. And now Southeast has fallen behind. 13-7. We'll wait for our extra point attempt. Got to be some surprised Southeast people over there on the other side of the field. It's time for them to uh, buckle up, settle down, play some football. The two turnovers, they, they got away with the first one. The second one killed them. Theron Mabry bailed him out on that first fumble. He intercepted the ensuing play, but uh, not this time after the fumble. They go on in and score. The extra point is no good. Wide to the right. That'll be costly. Brian Pruitt missed it. 13-7. Extra point attempt. He missed it badly, so Auburn may wondered, be hurting we as far as the kicker. Well, his, his kicks here have been really, really And short. that kickoff only inside the 20, and we see Williams returns it. He's just running across the field. He'll get across the 25 to the 27. He's brought down there by number 30. That's Victor Johnson, first and 10 for Southeast, and we'll see what the Knolls are made of. They now trail 13-7. But it's the kind of thing, no reason to panic. You've got that great ground game. Just go back to business and uh, grind it out and yeah. get six. Just don't fumble the ball and you're going to be okay. don't fumble the football. You know, two fumbles here. We're uh, midway into the second quarter. Can't be doing that kind of thing. We're up on the roof here in Auburndale, Florida at Bruce Canova Stadium. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jim Brockman along with Tad Reeve. Section 3, Class 4A championship game. Pitch goes back Anthony Shellman. He's got room, but it closes down in a hurry as he crosses the 30 to the 31, making a stop down there, number 45, Larry Dixon. That'll bring up second down. We'll call it five. I think the key is Southeast just play its own kind of football game. Be very methodical. Take all the time you no need hurry. to take to get down the field. You've got a lot of time to play. Defense just needs to... Uh, do a little soul searching how to stop those Washington boys and some of those trick passes. They can move the football. I really like the offensive game plan of Auburn so far. They, they've mixed it up and pretty Auburn basic. Dale. Yeah. What did I say? You said Auburnville. You said Auburn. This is the Georgia Auburn. Oh, that's right. This is not Auburn, Georgia. Well, we're in the wrong stadium. Oh, well, that's Florida down there. First down for Southeast. Anthony Shellman busts out to the 39-yard line. I thought we were at the Alabama Auburn game. We call that Saturday. Yeah, I think we are. We okay. better hurry up. All right. I know I am, but I don't want to say anything to you. <laughs> First and ten for the Seminoles, Anthony Shellman out to the 39. Southeast going right back to that solid ground game. In motion is Reeves running onto your screen there. Shellman, good penetration on that defense sliding in there. Number 51, Craig Hale, nice effort. Also getting in there to give him some help, Orlando Smith. Loss of a couple on the play for Anthony Shellman. Second down, 12 Southeast. And this is where Southeast might get a little shaky, gets a little tough when they're faced with that second and 12. Yeah, that first down is so crucial to the uh, Southeast offense. Get to five and six, take some pressure off. We've seen them in one uh, third and long situation. They completed and they the pass for 21 yards. And went on to score the game's first touchdown. There's Reggie Beatty, big running room, first down across midfield. Reggie Beatty makes up for that last loss on the last previous play. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. 
making a tackle, Eric Robinson, southeast into Bloodhound territory. We see Beatty kind of limping around on and off the field between plays, but certainly uh, looks like he's not hurt. Maybe he's just walking funny because exploded through the line there. Well, he was the way they were working on that thigh, that could be one of those thigh bruises that might be able to play, but by about Tuesday, you know, may not be able to get out of bed with it. We'll hope and, he'll be okay. It's okay to hurt on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Shellman, another first down inside the 40, and this is Southeast Seminole football making the tackle. Chuck Thomason and Robinson again, who's played a brilliant game so far, recovered two fumbles for Auburndale and also caught that big pass that set up the last touchdown. So he's yeah, they're getting their money's worth out of Robinson tonight. Tonight's game is again being carried live by WSIR Radio. And let's see, he's just a, a yard shy. Check that. It'll be second down and one now for Southeast. Was not a first down. Beatty, a, he's close. He only got a yard or two. Hit there first by Dexter Johnson, number 33 on the staff. Okay, we just got word from our truck and Bill Cavus that uh, we're in contact uh, on a mobile phone with WBRD, of course, who carries the Manatee games. And Manatee up by a touchdown, we understand, in the second quarter. So what else is new? Both Manatee, Manatee and Southeast are in the playoffs. Manatee what else playing is new? Vero Beach, ranked 18th yeah. in the country by USA Today. And Douglas gets the first down. He keeps it. Only gets three or four, but that's plenty. Down to the 34-yard line, Orlando Smith makes the tackle. And there's a key, as it is in all Southeast games, Freddie Douglas. If he can throw it, if he can run it, if he doesn't cough it up, when he plays well, well Southeast when, is invincible. Well, we've had a couple of fumbles, and it's absolutely not uh, Freddie Douglas' fault. He's the explosive kind of player earlier in the season. We said, you know, if he can just gain control of himself, and he certainly has a second half. I think that's why they're better. Two fumbles, uh, no uh, fault toward Freddie Douglas. Very quickly played first half. We only have 3.57 to go. Douglas rolling, he's got room, he'll tuck it, oh, and he slips. That's happened to him a couple times tonight uh, with big running room, and Douglas uh, gets ahead of himself and slips. I think just anxious. We were on the field before the game, didn't and the, seem bad. the, the didn't footing seem is anymore. very good. I think he's just a little anxious on some of these plays. He sees how much open field he's got. He's all that green territory. Just gets the big eyes. We'll give him a yard on the play, second down and nine now for Southeast. With plenty of time at 326, even with their methodical offense, plenty of time to get points on the board. And get back in front of this thing. Southeast trailing 13 to seven for the Auburndale Bloodhound. And if Kenny Motes had called on for a field goal, looks like the wind will be in his face. So Reggie, make the kick a little Reggie Beatty stepping through for a tough three or four yards. He's tackled down there by the freshman, Virgil McCombs, number 83. Gain of about four on the play, second down six. Inside the 30-yard line are the Southeast Seminoles. I think we're going to see them, even if they don't get the first down here, I think we're going to see them go for it. Still awful tough range for yeah. uh, Especially for with that win. As good of a kicker as Moats is, he's got great range out to some 40 yards or so, but very stiff win. Pitch goes back to Shellman. He's got room. He's inside the 25. He's got himself a first down. He's knocked out of bounds inside the 20. Here come the Seminoles. Virgil McCombs knocks him out. Well, Shellman must have looked at the wind and said, no, too, we're out of range for a field goal. I'll just <laughs> Better get the, the first. first down. Better get the first. And, of course, as the game progresses in a tight game like this, uh, if the kicking game comes into play, you got to favor Southeast. Kenny Motes, we know, is a fine kicker. And Brian Pruitt will. He's a kicker. He's, he's the kicker for Auburn, dude. Right. That's a little bit of trouble. It's hard to be in Moats' class. Especially when you go to Auburn, dude. <laughs> You're taking different classes. Well, they could both be in the same grade. That's true. You can't take geometry together, but... No, no. And now we've got... Uh, Looking across the way there, Reggie Beatty looking over at Paul Meckley. I think he's got some equipment problems. He's, you can see him there grabbing his shoulder pad. Whatever it was, he just yanked it off his uniform. He says, I guess I don't need that one. Chin strap? Or look I, I don't know. I'd play with my chin strap. I think I'll, I'd say, well, uh, look, give me another chin strap, chin please. Strap here. Well, that's, that's where the third stringer <laughs> just give me that give chin strap. Give me that strap, chin strap, yeah. son. Yes, sir. Glad I could help. Freddie Douglas engineering another nice drive for Southeast. And Beatty's a tailback now. 
and he gets the call, and he will go nowhere once again. How about Orlando Smith making a living there, submarining? Oh, excuse me, that was Randy Washington, the running back, fine running back, playing some defense. Got in there and made the penetration uh, maybe a half a yard on the play, and that's being generous. Well, and where is Anthony Shellman? Look on the sideline. Perhaps he's hurt. Uh, you know, he had that knee problem earlier in the week. They drained some fluid. There's Dr. Alan Lenkoff. And there, that's, uh, well, you don't quite see us. We're up there somewhere. I'm not sure where that camera angle's coming from. And we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. the Section 3 Class 4A Championship game. I'm Jim Brockman along with Tad Reeve for Paragon Cable here on Channel 25 in Manatee County. Southeast trailing 13 to 7, but and Southeast also threatening. And Anthony Shellman not on the field. What a horrible time to not have him in the lineup. They need him desperately when they get this close to scoring. You gotta wonder if that knee's still bottom. Wide oh, we open. got a man wide open. Oh, uh, great he, catch. He catch hold of it. Reeves, a fabulous catch. We've had two great receptions by both teams. He bobbled it all the way down the sideline, took a hit, and kept the ball in his hands the entire time. That is a tremendous play. Bobbled it for seven yards. Big play. Reeves and uh, making a great catch down there. Nice, nice looking pass from Douglas. First and goal at the two yard line for the Seminoles. Inside two minutes left in the first half. Southeast can go ahead at the half. That'd be a big, big momentum swing. Douglas pitch back to here's, Shellman. Here's Shellman. Oh, he gets hit, but he manages to get in, takes a couple of shots, doesn't bother him. Yeah, if his knee's bothering him, not on that play. He ran right over Larry Dixon. Larry Dixon, a good-sized young man at 190 pounds, but Anthony Shellman walked through him, and we're now tied at 13. Now it's up to Kenny Motes to give the Seminoles the lead. And there was a look at Anthony Shellman walk, running off the field. Uh, you saw him stop in a little... Uh, moment of silence, some thanks for uh, his abilities. You see a lot of showboating in football these days. Not an Anthony Shellman. Moats on to attempt the point after number 42. Good snap. It's blocked. Unbelievable. We're still tied. Moats doesn't miss many. And that was Randy Washington, number 41, the fine running back. Blocks it. We're all tied at 13. second quarter and Greg Mathis with a nice return for Auburndale out to their own 40 yard line you see him right there number seven and Auburndale not much time but the way they can throw the football they're probably be looking for more points here one, one back in the backfield three receivers oh Kevin Palmer can't get the sack on Reeves he gets the pass off remarkably it'll only gain a yard or two but a great effort by Reeves just to throw that thing and avoid the sack by Palmer making a tackle down there for Derek Boyd for Southeast, second down nine. And Boyd did a good job sticking. Washington, when he gets open, is really dangerous. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Eighteen to go in the second quarter. We're all tied at 13, and this has been a good football game here in the first half. And there's Washington. They let him go on the inside reverse, and he crosses midfield to about the 47. Clarence Williams makes the tackle, but it's a first down for the Bloodhounds. Hey, where, where they're so dangerous, Eric Robinson, number three, and number one, Rodney Chevalier, making tremendous blocks downfield. They're wide receivers who know, listen, if it's not thrown our way, we still have a job. They're keeping defensive backs tied up for a long time. The play uh, confused Southeast defense. Reeves with time to throw. He's got a man open. Not much yardage down to the 40, but Tommy James, excuse me, Bobby Green makes that reception. No huddle offense. Only 50 seconds to go here in the first half. Clock It'll, is running. Second and three. And now we got a flag. That almost got to be 
Well, yeah. I, I haven't guessed one of these right all night. I better let the well, official call. Yeah, it looks to me like Bobby Green yeah, uh, lined up offside wide off receiver there. on the right side, number 22. So that'll make it second down and eight. The time is the biggest uh, enemy of Auburndale right now. They want to go in uh, halftime with the lead here at home. It would be a big lead. Well, and the problem now is they go into a huddle. The clock is running. They're losing a lot of valuable time right now. 33 seconds, second down. Eight yards to go for Auburndale. They're going to just have to go deep. They don't have enough time to, to mount a drive. Got a man open. That's Robinson, his second catch of the night. He's driven out of bounds, and that's a big play to stop the clock. And he got the first down. And it's down. a first down to the 36. He did a good job. Right? As soon as he caught that ball, you saw he just turned tail and ran straight for the sideline. Right now, the Seminoles have to be glad that Auburndale didn't get the ball back with an extra minute to go. They only have 21 seconds, but they're moving the ball very well here on the Southeast defense, something that nobody's really done all year long. Yeah, now maybe we'll see Reeves throw the ball downfield. 21 seconds, it's time to go deep. That's how they scored that first touchdown. Oh, no, Kevin Palmer with the big... Wait, he, he's, he's not in, down! He's Unbelievable! Still Give that guy an award. He's inside the 30. It might run out the rest of the time, though. He's he, got a first down inside the 20. They need to time call timeout. Quickly. And he does with six seconds left. I'll tell you what, there may be some high school quarterbacks with more poise than that guy right there, Ryan Reeves. I haven't seen too many of them this year, though. What a play by Ryan. Kevin Palmer had him right in his sights. Well, the only, the only problem with Reeves is he's 5'10", 170 pounds. Otherwise, hey, this kid, he's going somewhere. Got it. Got the football inside the 20-yard line for a first down. And here again... There's and, only six seconds left. And they're going to kick a field goal. It'll they're going to try uh, the field goal. 36 yards. Well, let's see if Mr. Pruitt can redeem himself after missing that extra point. And if he makes it, you owe him an apology. I do. And, and I will. I'll say, hey, you're pretty good. Then man. I'll say, okay, I was right there. said you knew it all along. <laughs> <laughs> Holding down there is Eric Robinson. Big, big play here. Could give Auburn Dale the lead here at the last play of the first half. Kick is up. It looks good. <laughs> No, it's just oh, wide. Just, just missed it to the right. And Pruitt just misses on the 36 yard. There's still two seconds left here in the first half. And it looks like we're going to be all tied up at the end of that first half. Nice effort by Pruitt. Just missed. It was actually far enough just a little wide to the right. So you're the man. You did it. <laughs> I'll tell you who, who was relieved on that, of course, across the way, Paul Meckley, where stay tied. I want to see the, the the films of that Winter Haven Auburndale game. Yeah, I don't know what was I wrong mean, with those guys that night. They look good tonight. This is an explosive team. They're going to give uh, Southeast all they want all night. First time, of course, we've had Auburndale here for you on Paragon Cable. You see Paul Meckley across the way wearing the Seminole sweater, handmade by his wife, I might add. Nice job. We tried to scarf one ourselves. We asked if you know if we could get one, but okay. But she's already married. <laughs> That's the end of our first half, and it's a good one. We're all tied. 13-13.